So diving into how we use LiDAR at Civil Maps. Um, this is kind of a basic block diagram of how um, the information flows for us. Um, our inputs would be LiDAR, IMU. Um, we use a little bit of GPS just for general position, but mostly the IMU and the LiDAR. And ultimately, we are trying to get the um, augmented reality maps. So that's as the vehicle's driving through, um, it's loading map information and taking that map information and projecting it into, um, into the camera or another sensor. And it does that by using um, our localization. Um, but we're going to be focusing more just on the hardware abstraction layer. Um, and that is going to be taking the LiDAR and the IMU and the GPS and taking it from different vendors um, and putting it into a, creating a point cloud from it. And this is really important because, especially for us, we are working with multiple customers and it's important that we're not right, that we can take in different, um, different types of LiDAR, we can take in different right. IMU, right. So and we can still work with that. Right, from an, from an engineering and a um, customer integration standpoint, uh, the much, as much as we can abstract out um, hard, tightly coupled hardware dependencies, the better, I think, as a company, wide policy throughout the different um, engineering teams we have that we found that we've never come to regret abstraction. You know, we've, yeah. never, we've, we've never come to say, oh, you know, decoupling this, these tightly coupled modules came to bite us. It's, it's always been right. in the contrary, but abstraction has definitely helped. Um, <clears throat> so in that, in that end, like Scott was saying, you know, different customers use different sensor suites um, and combinations and different models of IMUs, GPS and LiDAR units, um, in addition to other things like stereo cameras. Um, so for us to be able to dynamically load um, shared object libraries, essentially our drivers that are compiled as shared objects, and dy dynamically load those in order to serve our customers um, fairly seamlessly through just um, how we use it is just conf JSON config files that you know point to different uh, different shared object files. As much as we can do that um, and abstract out the hardware, we found we can better serve our customers and also allows our hardware abstraction layer to be applied to many different applications, like outside of just the, the AV world. You know, right, can, that's true. It applies to general robotics, um, internet of things, like like any, any sort of um, platform that uses multiple sensor suites and you know has different actuators and um, you know, different end effectors or anything like that. Right. Um, I think maybe at this point, does anybody have have some questions um, about kind of how we use LiDAR, about the hardware abstraction layer um, in general? Let's take a look at the chat. Currently, no. So Currently, no. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll be will be, will be. Oh, yeah. is everything done in C++? Currently, yes, everything is done in C++. Um, yes. Occasionally, we might prototype things in Python and just, you know, pipe them through um, an OS-level um, pipe or an Ethernet socket, but generally, um, generally everything is done in C++. Um, and then there's also another question, does, does the hardware abstraction layer include the framework for cameras? Um, currently, in the current... Um, commits that we have in the open source repository, it does not, but um, that's some of our research efforts right now is, yeah. is going into that, um, so that's in the pipeline to be expected. Exactly. And that's that's what we're excited about too, is being able to also like take the um, take the camera data in and do the same type of fusion, so generic camera data, generic LiDAR data, and do the sensor fusion between those different sensors. And I just got another question about um, whether we use 2D or 3D LiDAR, and uh, we use three-dimensional LiDAR um, for all of our applications. And does the, and we have another question here, does IMU require three-axis gyroscope and three-axis accelerometer? Uh, and the answer to that is yes. Yeah, yeah that, is the, that is what we're currently working with. 